Sony's style is one of simple functionality, high-end minimalism. He designed this Alessi timepiece, and he's even dreamt up a few shampoo bottles. Now nearing 50, Piero Lissoni is a veteran of the industry. There is virtually nothing he hasn't tried, from architecture to art direction, to interior and industrial design. Nice girls get to heaven, but bad girls get to go wherever they want. I think the same applies to designers. Some of them are bad girls, others just go to heaven and stay there. Some 50 architects, designers and graphic artists work for Lissoni Associati in this former soap factory in the center of Milan. Lissoni first started flexing his creative muscles at age 22 in 1978, and he spent the next few decades cementing an international reputation. We all work together as a collective. The way we work is a little communist. We sit down and discuss each other's projects. Everyone has a say. Sometimes even I have to defend my work. Lissoni's kitchens, designed for the upmarket Boffy brand, are models of efficiency. Combining cutting-edge technology with clean, modern lines, they're typical of the Lissoni style. Everything's been stripped down to the bare essentials. We've left out anything we consider unnecessary. You don't need to adjust or change anything. You can just shift things around when you're cooking between the hot and the less hot plates. Actually, drawing a design is probably the easiest part of the creative process. It gets hard when you have to start factoring in everyday usage, the way an object is actually used. Take a kitchen, you have to think about what changes when you sit or start cooking. Lissoni says his style is best described by the term understatement. In his book, Good design should never be too obtrusive. And that might explain what makes Piero Lissoni one of the most successful creative minds in Italy, despite his low public profile. Most children want to be astronauts when they're grown up. I always wanted to be an architect. And when you come from Milan, you automatically do some design as well. These days, his offices design showrooms, exhibitions, furniture and corporate images. But whatever the product, Lissoni always has the last say, even though he finds it hard to let go. To me, my designs are never quite perfect. I could keep polishing them forever. I find it very hard to stop. It's like little Italian boys, they don't leave home until they're 70. But when Piero Lissoni does manage to let his babies go, they always do him proud. a.m. in the center of Hereford, and time for designer Hermann Weizenegger to wake his colleague Oliver Vogt. This is their most elaborate project to date. Living and working under the public gaze, surrounded by objects, designed especially for this exhibition. We're not shut in, we're not in a container, we're in a museum, but we're free. Of course people sometimes come in and ask about things, but we also try to live our normal lives. The designer's home for six weeks is a prefabricated wooden house, which of course they designed and furnished themselves. Their workplace is the factory of the future. Not only do V and W want to display their works, they also want to reveal the design process. 
Here in their laboratory, the two are working hard to complete a new sports car chassis by the time the exhibition ends. We simply want to show how we work out the shape, more or less step by step. And here we are just using simple cardboard, and we're trying out adding on different variations. The principle of this factory of the future is that we simply involve the customer or potential customer in the creative process because we say we no longer want to make mass market products designed for imaginary customers. We want to make products that are individually made to measure but nevertheless can be manufactured on an industrial scale. The two industrial designers have worked together for 14 years. Their living room contains prototypes that they are testing for functionality here in the museum. Well, for our living space, there's a sofa we developed with the core company that can also be used as a bed or as a completely normal sofa that you can relax on to watch television. For the living area, we've developed a mobile space system, and we can move everything, from a guest bed to paintings and shelving. The room can be designed individually. And of course we need light in the living space, and these neon tubes can be rearranged. They were designed especially for this exhibition. It's 1.30 in the afternoon, and time for lunch. It's a public affair, spaghetti a la v and w design. They pass the test before an admiring audience. And in the next room, rather more complicated, rest their elaborate media installations. This is the world's first game of video billiards. I'll show you how it works. This is the ball with a timeline. We're now at 2002, one, we've stopped at 2000. The white ball is the camera which always picks up a relationship with the background colors. The blue one is the effects ball. When it stops on an effect, you get different effects. And with this table, you can play back about 12 years of our memories. And the idea is that when the ball stops, there's always an association with a picture or a sequence. Vogt and Weizenegger say design should be fun. For visitors, the duo's last 12 creative years are just a game. And although the exhibition is still crowded, the designers prepare to go to bed at exactly 10 p.m. I'll set the alarm for eight. Two of Germany's most unconventional designers with another two weeks of living and sleeping in public ahead of them. Sculpture from the communist era and the latest modern designs. Those are the two poles in the life of Jan Nemechek, one of the founders of the Czech Republic's leading design collective, Olgoj Chorchoy. The sculptures are by his father. His studio is now Olgoj Chorchoy's headquarters. The collective consists of ten designers and it takes its name from a creature known as the Mongolian Death Worm. The original pronunciation, uh, which we uh, learned from the Mongolian guys, it's We are using it because of the sound. We always try to bring some, some idea into the design. We are not working just with the form, but we, we, we would like to have uh, uh, all uh, designs and, and all forms reasonable. The best example is the successful twin wall glass series. Not only do the two layers of glass look good, they also keep drinks warm. One of the young designers on the team is a German, Lars Kemper. It was clear after a few days. I came to Prague. The whole thing was supposed to last five months. At the end, they asked me, why are you going home? I'm still looking for the answer today, so I'm still here. Kemper, who's been in Prague for three years, is a permanent member of Olgoj Chorchoy, and he designs everything from furniture and glasses to jewelry. It's still hard for the Prague Collective to find the right people to make products from their outstanding designs. Often the products are only made in small quantities, which doesn't exactly make for commercial success. 
Every once in a while, something comes back where someone's asked for certain alterations or a different size. For instance, a request once came back with this TC2 asking for something more to be done. We call the result TC4. It became a four-armed candelabra. It's, it's Czech design, uh, kind of mixture uh, with Italian and uh, somehow precise with like, like a German. The Prague designers are especially proud of the work they did on Sound Square Studios. They converted an old print shop into a high-tech sound studio. Their love of perfection in lighting design is evident. The showpiece of the conversion is the futuristic design of the studio itself with its recording console. It looks like a, a, a board of uh, Star Trek, that's true, but uh, it's not because of the form. It, the form comes from, from the function, from the, the, the sound uh, problems, or sound needs. We move on past the Dynamo restaurant, also designed by the group. You can really start working on high quality projects like this from the very first second onwards. That's very difficult to do in Germany, as is being able to work this creatively. It's evening in a small theater in the city. Olga Tjortoy members often get inspiration from other forms of art. One member has a premiere tonight as an actor. We can do really professional work in, in design, but we need somehow uh, freedom at the evening, so so Dan is playing theater, uh, Honza is, uh, you with know, with, yeah, exactly, and I, I can do skating or, you know. Despite their often futuristic designs, the Prague Collective are keeping their feet firmly on the ground. Only on stage will they be taking off for faraway galaxies. An explosion of light consisting of a thousand plastic spheres. The latest creation by British designer Stuart Haygarth. Gift wrapping sprayed in a mass of different colors. Commissioned by a Canadian cosmetics firm for its flagship stores in New York and Los Angeles. What I came up with was a kind of a scientific molecular explosion. <coughs> starting with a very small spheres in the middle and the lighter colors in the middle and gradually the spheres get bigger and bigger until on the outside you have the very big ones which are the, the largest and the darkest of the colors table fireworks a thousand miniature explosions that resulted in a millennium chandelier all my work so far it has a, um, a narrative a story behind it there's a story behind the objects that i use yeah, for example, the Millennium Chandelier, the story is that they were all exploded on one particular evening and it was the start of a new millennium, so it's an interesting story. Flotsam, collected by Haygarth on Kent's beaches over a period of two years and turned into collector's items. They come at a price, of course. This lamp costs 6,000 euros. They're almost like, find, it's almost to me like finding little jewels on the, on the beach. Um, although they're very worthless bits of scrap, um, when you actually look at them in close detail, there's a lot of thought and, and um, beauty in each object. Uh, even if it's just a, 
a lid from a, um, a bottle, you know. There's lo lots of thought and care gone into designing that lid. Haygarth is always looking for new materials. He gets inspiration for new creations in Berlin's junk shops. I find that um, junk shops or retro shops like this are a good source of inspiration for things because the, the shops themselves collect certain things, uh, specific like glasses or so they're already collections in, in the shops. So for me, it's good inspiration to kind of walk around and have a, have a look. To make this lamp, the British designer took 416 plastic glasses used at a number of different weddings and recycled them. His next lamp will contain colored glass in a number of different shapes. I just think glass has a, a very magical quality to it when, when light shone through it. Um, it looks very different when it hasn't got light shining through it, but then it becomes almost very much alive when, when light is shone through it. Uh, and it changes the, the whole character of the piece, of the object. I found two um, different coloured glass ashtrays. Um, and particularly, I have been collecting amber, amber glass and green glass, so it's quite a good find. Haygarth's latest works are being packed up, ready for shipment to the US. And once again, Flotsam is being given a new lease of life, this time on the other side of the Atlantic. Sören Koch showcases luxury, uniting the best and best-known classy products under one roof. Just Fine is a youthful aid in the time-consuming search for true glamour and splendor. The 40-year-old from northern Germany has wanted to create a fairy tale feel-good world like this ever since he was a child. It's fun to be surrounded by lovely things. It sure is, and I really like sitting in this car. Anything ordinary is not welcome. Exclusivity is everything. Take this jewelry made by Gabriela Uphaus from Dusseldorf. The current trend is for stones in pink and orange, and they absolutely have to twinkle. They're unique because they're handmade. We start at 600 euros. It really all depends on the materials that we work with, from silver to platinum. And they can easily go over 20,000, and above that there's no limit. A highlight of the luxury trade fair is the latest Bentley, a Continental GT, a superb luxury vehicle at a mere 260,000 euros. It's a 560 horsepower car. It's got a top speed of 320 kilometers an hour, making it one of the fastest four-seater coupés on the market. I'll probably take this car. I'll have to drive it to check out various things. My wife will have to try it out. That's very important. Women decide. And my dog. I've got a little dog. He'll have to like the car. That's very important. After all, the dog is also part of the family, even for the wealthy, and demands a share of luxury. When it comes to what your dog should wear in the morning, we have various options among these collars. A Smarties collar trimmed with Swarovski stones. Or if he's really decadent, I can recommend this gold collar decorated with pin-up girls. And if your dog refuses to walk, you can put it in a carry bag. This one has a lovely Chanel look. And when it returns home exhausted from its evening walkies, Naturally, the dog needs a great bed. And, of course, what could be better than these marvellous ottomans and expensive sofas in gold leaf? Just under 50 exclusive exhibitors have brought some 6,000 items to the Just Fine Fair. Everything is classy, beautiful and, above all, expensive. 
Elke Martensen is a trendsetter in model hats, which are popular with European nobility, even though royalty has also started tightening the purse strings. Who nowadays can afford a hat like this one and only wear it once? Those days are long gone. People wear them more often now, and they often have a new dress and wear the old hat, or conversely a new hat with an old dress. Oh, the problems of the rich and beautiful. But that's fine by Sören Koch. After all, with just fine, he's found a gap in the market. Burkhard Bovensiepen is the head of Alpina Autos in Buchloe, southern Germany. He's not only the creator of luxury cars, he's also a fine wine connoisseur. Alpina is about the finer things in life, and that includes both cars and wines. The cars we produce elicit emotion. The people who buy them don't just want a means of transport. They are people who love to drive cars, people who have fun every time they take their BMW Alpina out for a spin. Next door to the car factory, there's a paradise for wine connoisseurs. There are over a million bottles here. But it's not just the quantity that impresses. Bovenzieben's private wine cellar contains some 20,000 bottles of the highest distinction, including top-notch products from both the old and the new worlds. That's not only one of the best Californian wines. It's got to be one of the best wines in the world. 1984 was an extraordinary year for Californians. And Ridge Montebello is the finest you can drink. Something really great. Bovenziepen doesn't just buy wines for pleasure. They're also a good investment. If you want a 1979 Imperiale Petrus or Romain Conti, you're going to have to spend over 10,000 euros. I was interested in cars even as a boy. At the age of 13, I was always driving around without a license. Those were wild days. It doesn't make me happy if I earn more money one year than the next. It doesn't affect my mood in the slightest. Burkhard Bovensieben is proud of his success. But he seems even more proud of the style with which he's achieved it.